Here we are, and let's just get straight into this chapter 3. Beasts. Oh my god. Why the envoys and the aiding troops all went missing? What happened to them? Does it mean why did the, they went missing? <laughs> With Miss Iron Fist's robotic voice ringing in my ears, my consciousness had drifted freely in the twilight zone. I felt as if I was soaking in a hot spring, but very soon the pleasure was brutally ended by someone slapping my face. Who is it? My eyes opened to find a machi... Ma mach I don't know that word in English, so... Machete, <laughs> point dangerously close to my nose. <laughs> I could just start saying the words I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> in German. <laughs> if I know the word. <laughs> Maybe I do that, who knows. Hey, who are you? I'm just passing by. Stay clear of this place. War is coming and things are gonna get nasty. The Schicksal emblem on the soldier's armor almost gave me a heart attack. Thank goodness they soon left me alone. <laughs> Are we not in good terms with them? Not far from where I stood, the Schicksal and Jormungand soldiers were marching towards Munimberia. Oh, wow. The twins are little devils that won't go down easily. Maybe something big happened on their way to Munimberia? One puzzle after another. Somehow, I felt finding them was the key to putting together all the puzzle pieces. True, we did see them right at the start. They Did they do something? I went on towards the border valley. It's a path rarely trodden upon, save for a few monster trails. After a long while, I finally reached the valley. Based on Rita's intel, this is where everything began to fall apart. In the embrace of high cliffs, a waterfall poured down. On the ground, a maze of winding tracks led to darkness. I kept walking, for I didn't know how long, until I finally spotted some traces left by humans. Some rubble, a military lamp, and a pack. I was about to check the pack when I saw something move in the corner. Lilia? It turned around and something it held fell to the ground. C Captain, you didn't make it back. It's a long story. Kongling's formation went wrong. Why are you here? There are a lot of monsters in this cave and uh, I, I'm trapped here. Monsters? I meant to ask more, but I suddenly caught a glimpse of some weird-looking monsters rearing their heads. Th that's them! I fought them off many times, but they always came back like there's a demon on the other side. I can't kill them all, and I can't drive them away. I'm never leaving this cave now. Okay, I, I thought she was I, I thought she was lying, but she's not. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just suspicious of everyone, okay? Wait, they found us. Our eyes met the monsters and they began to charge at us immediately. Right before it's too late, I yanked Lilia to the side. The monsters couldn't stop and bumped into the wall. The cave trembled heavily and crushed stones began to rain down. Run, Lilia. Oh, okay. Seems like, uh, defeat all enemies. <gasps> With her? Okay, I have to take a look. I am sorry, but she, she's interesting. She definitely interests me. Blueberry blitz. Oh, I like that. Okay. What does she do? I will just like just skip through it. Okay. Four sequences. Okay. 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 Oh, ice. That's interesting. I've never fought with someone with ice, I think. And I will try characters like at a complete different time. <laughs> and hopefully when I get them. <laughs> That's just what I'm hoping anyway. All right, let's go. Okay. Oh. He looks really cool. Oh, she has a really big face. Drew, I think I've, I've talked about this with someone. That Himiko, like, I don't even know which Himiko it is. But the ones that are rather slow. It makes sense because it is such a big blade. But she also has a big blade. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Wait, what? Oh, what was that? I mean, it was the ultimate, but... <laughs> ow, 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 don't, 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 stop. Like, things flying at me and rubble. That is just mean. Okay, let me see what the ult is again. 
Okay, so does she charge and then like go at it? And that that's ice damage, right? Oh, it has super tough skin. You won't be able to damage it, so don't even bother. But we have to do something. We do. Oh my god. <laughs> was it? Was it just like really weird tight? Did he even said something about shields, right? I think I said, I never think of that, not even with a million guesses. Iron Head Monster. Ah, huh, okay, 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 okay. Ah, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, like, those rubble thingies, those stones falling from the sky are really mean. Uh, but... Oh, God. Can I... Can I please stop walking in it? It's weakened, Captain. Attack it now. It doesn't. It doesn't seem weak because I am walking into the stones all of the time. Can I just stop? <laughs> I'm doing this way more like difficult for myself. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I did make this way more difficult than it had to be because I was running. Oh, she's adorable! Because I was running into the stones all the time. That was... <laughs> that was just not smart. But she is fun. I like the way she attacks. And she is cute. We did that. Maybe we can fight with her again. I really hope so. Phew, we're safe now. The monsters didn't catch up. By the way, why are you here? I got separated from the Shiksai soldiers. That's it. You sure know how to skip all the important parts. <laughs> oh, fine. I'll start with the beginning. After we got into Kongming's formation, I don't know what happened, but I was sent to Shiksai. Rosa, Idiotka, Kongming, and Captain, you were all gone. Oh, she's Russian too, huh? I saw the enlistment ad that said 300 a month with food and shelter, so I signed up and got sent to Imberia. On our way, we found some villagers chased by monsters. We wanted to save them, but more monsters came and we split. So the Shiksai soldiers are still alive? Yeah, should be. Maybe they're trapped at other places. Alright, the messenger from Emberia is also with them. Oh, okay. Okay, then that is really where everything starts. I see. We walked into the cave as we talked. All of a sudden, some soft noise came from the darkness ahead. Hush. Is it monsters? Nah, it's slap sound. Maybe someone is playing mud. Eh? Lilia? Is that you, Lilia? The next second, something in the dark popped up and grabbed Lilia. Rosa, ugh. I thought you were dead. Boo-hoo. You, you're hurting me. Ugh. Huh? Captain is here too. Great. Rosalia, why are you here? There are a lot of monsters in this cave, and I am trapped here. <laughs> well, <laughs> I fought them off many times, but they always came back, like there's something terrible on the other side. Okay, you guys are definitely twins. <laughs> you said the same thing, just a little different. I can't kill them all, and I can't drive them away. I'm never leaving this cave now. Can you help me, Captain? They literally said the same thing. <laughs> this sounds familiar. All right, I got it now. <laughs> Are we playing her now? Is that it? Is it? Oh, let's go now, Rosa Idiotka. Ah, Lily. Let's go. Rosa, your hands are full of mud. Stay away from me. Oh, right. Come check out my stove. Wait, did we skip the fight? Did we? <laughs> stove? Wait. You call that slump of mud a stove? That's what I learned in Jormungand. Super useful. Rosalia, you haven't told us why you're here. I'm now the second biggest boss in Jormungand. I came with the thousands of brothers for some serious business. <sighs> That's nothing compared to me. I'm a Shiksai general now. The Kozak queen gave me her treasure. Let me find it. That da the Jormungand universal compass. Looks like it's made of brass and totally soaked. Pretty much useless now. Um, even without the compass, the great Rosalia can always tell directions. Duh, I don't believe it. Well, I believe neither of you. Right, where are the Jormungand soldiers? 
I got separated. Oh, that's a surprise. It's like you two were following the same script. <laughs> we were about to save Kongming, but we ran into some villagers who village was, whose village was taken by monsters. But there were too many of these monsters and we couldn't beat them. We got trapped here and there's no way out. The twins being here means the other soldiers are not far away either. Only a matter of time before we find them. But... Villagers and monsters. Pretty much the same story told by Lilia before. Rosalia and Lilia. Do you still remember what the villagers looked like? Um, no, but the leader was a man in black. Um, no, but the leader was a man in black. <laughs> Are you two messing with me? Anything special about this leader? Special? He looked super ordinary. Oh, he was holding a black umbrella on a nice and sunny day. Black umbrella? Um, the villagers I saw had no umbrella and they looked normal too. Never mind, I give up. You're not giving me much, but I can tell something isn't right. Um, I'll think about it later. Follow me. I'll take you out of here. Huh? What are you two doing in the corner? <laughs> Hold on, don't eat anything unclean. It's super yummy. You want to bite, Captain? Hey, get this black thing off my face. Huh? It smells. Is it sweet potato? Yeah, it's a teeny weeny burnt, but the taste is still awesome. Rosa only baked two. That's not enough. That's because the tiny stove can only bake two at a time. Captain, give yours to Lily. Why would there be sweet potatoes? Where did you find them? There's plenty over there. Just dig up a bit of soil and you'll find them. What are you doing, Lily? Don't dig up my sweet potatoes. I found them. Ho ho, it's mine now. Let's bake them. Be careful, the monsters might smell it and come. Come fight me, Vodka Swordmaster. Winners takes all. Come fight me, Vodka Typhoon. Winner takes all. None of them is listening. Hush now, monsters are coming. Rosa Idiotka, you brought the monsters here. What? It's your noise that drew them here? <laughs> okay, I love those two. They are adorable. Protect the sweet potatoes. Okay, let's protect the sweet potatoes. <laughs> yes, we're playing her. Okay, I'm curious. <laughs> they are really funny. I like them. Like, they are in the main story, right? Like, every character is somewhere in the main story, right? Oh, cute. Okay, let's see. One, two. <laughs> Try my banana peel trap, you stupid monsters. Gosh, here's a lot flying around. Oh, we're fighting together. Oh, okay, I almost fell. I think they're trying to snatch my sweet potatoes. We are literally competing. That is so cool. Oh my god. She has a spinning, spinning charge attack. That is... Oh, that's fun. <laughs> okay, that is fun. Stop it, it trapped me. Oh my god. Okay, so they're fighting the monsters and themselves. Interesting. More spinning! Is there a way to play for them, like to get them with playing? I mean, not... not... Uh, <laughs> not gambling, but playing. I guess the word I'm searching for is farming. <laughs> Let me take some more sweet potatoes before we leave! <laughs> uh, she's also very cute and cool. Why is every character so cool? Then we can go on. Whew. Finally made it out. Are you alright? They lost their sweet potatoes now. Rosalia and Lilia lay still on the ground and gave me no reply. Hey, Rosalia? Lilia? Are you alright? I'm starving. <laughs> no stamina left. Can't move a finger now. One sweet potato is not even an appetizer. I didn't bring my stuff and I can't bake more now. Get up. I'm sending you back to the Arc Emperor and Corsa Queen. <laughs> How about this? I know a place where you can eat to your heart's content. On hearing the word eat, Rosalia and Lilia sprung up like a pair of freshly infected zombies. <laughs> 
Where is it? I can still walk if it's not too far away. Moon and burial. <laughs> Let's get there. When we arrived, only a handful of soldiers stood guard at the gate, and sorrowful blizzard tunes echoed in the city. Oh. We found Kong Ming lost in her thoughts behind the scyther. She didn't even notice us until we came close. Captain, you... I knew you wouldn't die easily on me. I saw you run over the cliff and I couldn't find anything left by you. I had to think that you... You can rest your worries now. I promised you to look after myself, didn't I? Captain, you're a reckless fool. Nyum, nyum. Mm, wake up, Rosalia. There's no sweet potato left. Are you biting your fingers? <laughs> okay, those two are adorable. I love them. Rosalia and Lilia, after you disappeared, were you seeking were you, were you seeking them too? I'm starving. <laughs> I can eat two horses now. They ran into monsters and got trapped in a valley near the Yormungand and Imberia border. We are in war, and the best we have now is our emergency food supply. Did someone say emergency food? Two big steamed buns, 20 small ones, and fried dove sticks. Is this enough? That should do. I simply ignored the silent screams from Rosalia and Lilia. <laughs> we are safe! Following Kongming is the rightest choice. Kongming, we saw many Shiksal and Yomungon soldiers on the way. Are they... Hmm. They believe we have held their missing troops and thus allied to fight us. We cannot hold them off. I've told Rita and Theresa to evacuate the citizens, but I didn't foresee your return. Forgive me for being blunt, but Kongming... If you have some strategy to fend them off, now is the time to use it. Captain, what do you mean? Your intention is obvious. You plan to guard the empty city alone against thousands of armed and angry soldiers. It's the only way that works. Well, there must be other options you've considered. Yes, as you said, I do have another strategy. With the capital under siege, what's keeping you from acting decisively? You should know that nothing outweighs life. I know. And I also know mine is not the only life that matters. If the price for saving the city is thousands of innocent lives, would you still choose to follow through? I... My decision is final. I do have the formation to annihilate every human being around the city, but I've forsaken it. Taking thousands of lives hostage might compel the besiegers to retreat, but it would only justify their invasion. Dad, mm. she of course she has a point. <laughs> so this is the only way. In the setting sun, Kongming overlooked the vacant city with her moonful but determined eyes. All went quiet, and even the twins gulping down their food felt something and raised their heads. I looked into their confused eyes. Kongming, I may have a way to avoid the kingdom conflict. Hmm. Yomungond and Shiksal invade us because of the Hodo explosion. Snow melted and sea formed in the snow nation. Ocean receded and land rose in the pirate heaven. But the beast is not Imberia's fault, and they fight us because they believe Imberia diverted the damage to them. Yes. We don't know if it's an easy excuse for them to justify the invasion or a true conviction of righteous revenge. But the spark that started the fire is the missing troops that never returned to their home kingdoms. Keep talking. What if survivors of the missing troops show up? You mean... Yes, someone gave me a list of all the soldiers sent to Imberia for aid. In the list, two names caught my attention. Vodka Typhoon and Vodka Swordmaster. <laughs> I can't get over the vodka. <laughs> They're Rosalia and Lilia's ally al allies. They were each sent to Shiksal and Jormungand when the formation went wrong. I see, I noticed their disappearance, but at that moment the situation required me to focus on the battle. Now that we can play the survivor card, the fundamental justification behind their invasion does not stand anymore. This can at the very least secure us a negotiation with the besiegers. Rita told me the two aid forces were led by Vodka Typhoon and Vodka Swordmaster. But I never made the connection. Even so, it still puzzles me that the two kingdoms should put our feud aside and send the soldiers to our rescue. <clears throat> As for this, Lilia, tell us why. 
Lilia gobbled down a big steamed bun and cleared her throat. The Ark Emperor was hesitant about helping Emberia. After all, we have this Shiksal first policy. But she told us the three kingdoms were leaves on the same branch and Emberia's peril would be felt by all. I see, but even if negotiation is possible, the disastrous aftermath of the Hodo explosion won't be ignored. To put myself in their shoes, I'd never withdraw my siege simply because the misunderstanding has been cleared. About this, Kongming, a private word, please. Lily, I think Captain Kongming were staring at us all the time. Nothing serious. Let's get fed first. <laughs> Let's get feed. All right. So what are we going to say to her in, like, like uh, in secret? Actually, I'm curious. Gosh, this is exciting. <laughs> A few days later. Captain has been pacing back and forth for an eternity. He must be anxious. It's been three days since the letter was delivered and still no reply from the allied forces. I am worried that it's out of our hands now and worrying doesn't help. Apart from the desert munching twins over there, a dessert munching twins. <laughs> now it's not desert, but dessert. Apart from the dessert munching twins over there, you're perhaps the only one who can still remain calm. Anxiety and impatience are enemies of nurturing good character. Captain, read a book to restore your inner peace. I then heard a string of hasty footsteps coming close. Oh, your majesty, the Ark Emperor, 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 <laughs> the Ark Imperator and Corsa Queen have sent word. See, like I told you. She took the letter and opened it with a poker face. A few moments later, she put the letter away and looked at me. So... The next day, the command of the Allied forces. Should I inform the Grand Chancellor and Theresa Sama? No need. Tell them to continue the evacuation. It's a big gamble for us. If the negotiation goes south, you can know what will happen. I know. Even if it comes to the worst, I can still earn some time for the evacuation. But you don't have to... It's too late for me to back away now. Let's finish what we started. Together! After all, it's me that led Hodo into the sea and started the chain reaction. Besides, besides saving you is only part of my plan. Himiko and Fuwa also need my help. Yes, <laughs> yes. Himiko and Fuwa were the first to die in the first part, so they need help. <laughs> I still remember the dumbfounded me standing on the cold and bloodstained stairs before the palace. I wanted to scream, but my throat was too sore to allow it. I wanted to cry, but my eyes were filled up by the settled blood. I wanted to question the murderer, but her burning vengeance sealed my lips. In the end, even the murderer died in my arms. Like a drowned person desperately struggling to hold on to something, I tried to get to the bottom of the tragedies. Back then, I couldn't see the whole picture and write a happy ending for everyone. But it's all different now. Okay, good, 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 good. Captain? Let's go. Rosalia and Lilia, get prepared. Coming. Hmm? I'll make it work. Aww. We, we have to. The command was set at the border of Jormungand and Emberia. The vanguard had sieged Moon Emberia, but the command was still at the border. That sent a very subtle message. The command was in a cave rather than a camp. That's part of the legacy left by Hodo's explosion. The snow on the great plains of Schicksal had all melted and half the kingdom went underwater. Oh god. And the tide-riding pirates of Jormungand were turned into cave dwellers. It's not your fault, Captain. Frodo threatened all of the realm, and it's impossible to contain its damage. If you didn't lead Hudo into the... H Hudo... Hudo... <laughs> I have no idea. Actually, I'm just saying it the way I think it should be. <laughs> Even though it could be completely wrong. If you didn't lead Hodo into the sea and I didn't activate the Guardian formation, we'd be seeing more miseries. I know, I know all along, but still... Hmm. Oh my god, she looks so hot. I'm sorry, I, I really love Himiko. I just really love her. As Snort put an end to our conversation, we had already reached the depth of the cavern. I looked around and found Jormungand trade commodities randomly piled up in the corners. The leaders of the allied forces measured us up with cold eyes. 
On making eye contact, a trace of surprise flashed over each of their faces. But they soon resumed calm and fixed their unfriendly eyes on Kongming. Well, well, the legendary first grand series in the flesh. What an honor. You played us like a fiddle, master strategist. A thousand years of wisdom on a little girl that couldn't look more than twelve. Who'd have thought? You know I'm an elder, but you don't respect me as one. I've heard a lot about the heroic second Corsair Queen, but I have to say you turned out to be a disappointment. You? Enough. We're not here for petty arguments. Kongming, you should have seen what you've done to Jormungand on the way here. And I have to applaud your courage waltzing in here with only three guards. Or maybe in your eyes we're no more than a pack of bandits that pose no threat to you? With the last words, the Arch Imper Imperator threw a punch on the wall. The ground quaked and rubble fell. The cave trembled all over under the impact. Arch Imperator, your reputation has long preceded you, and I'd say it's well justified. I'll be candid, I have two goals. One is to prove my innocent, and the other is to ensure the Empire's survival. Hmm, <laughs> I'll be candid too. I'm afraid none of your wishes will be granted today. He meant... Corsair Queen, please remain calm. Shiksal and Jormungand's sufferings all came from Hodo's explosion. But the beast is not Emberia's fault, and you are here because you believe Emberia diverted the damage to Jormungand. So what? I don't intend to question your judgment, but there was no such diversion. Captain, you are adding insult to injury. You are crossing the line here. If you fail to produce valid evidence... It takes remedy to convince you, not evidence. I fully understand your motivation to hold Emberia accountable. But what if Emberia is also a victim? That's a lie, yes. Emberia suffered the first when Hodo broke loose. But we dispatched troops to your rescue as soon as we heard. How did our kindness repay us? Our soldiers are missing and Hodo's explosion shifted the terrains of Jormungand and Schicksal forever. While Amberia sustained some losses, but your existence was never threatened. I say that's evidence enough. Please hear me out, Corsair Queen. Let me tell you the truth why Amberia alone survived the Hodo explosion. Hodo is a ferocious beast I sealed a thousand years ago with the help of my Amberian friends. For the past millennium, I've been reinforcing the seal and I naturally understand the beast's rage towards Amberia. For insurance, I deployed the Guardian formation across Imberia du during my early travels. Only I can activate the formation, and it's the only thing that kept Imberia from collapsing in the explosion. Still, I underestimated the beast. The formation deployed over centuries crumbled like a paper in the explosion. If not so, you wouldn't be able to march to Moon Imberia without much resistance. She is telling the truth. Don't fall for her lies! Her eyes tell me she's not lying. These are the eyes of a protector. But what about our missing soldiers? Where have they gone? It simply doesn't make sense. Like we said in the letter, the troops didn't reach Emberia and our envoys didn't make it back. I personally received the Emberian envoy and he was with the dispatched Shiksal soldiers. Same here. Yes, it happened on the way to Emberia. We are yet to figure out what exactly happened, but the survivors' words might carry some weight. If not for the survivors mentioned in your letter, we'd never have this conversation. Rosalia and Lilia, tell us what you've been through. We were about to save Kongmen, but we ran into some villagers whose village was taken by monsters. But there were too many of these monsters, and we couldn't beat them. We got trapped here, and there's no way out. We met some villagers asking for help too. We wanted to help, but more monsters came at, came at us. Villagers in both stories. That does sound suspicious. But how can we be sure the twins haven't betrayed us and made up the story? After the explosion, the Jormungan Sea dried out and all ships were beached. The fishers had to abandon their homes and settle in the caves. At this time of year, the nights are still cold and many of them have no shelter, no food. We've lost everything, but we have to live on. We were born fishers and plowing the land isn't in our blood. How are we supposed to make a living then? 
Till now, most of our houses are flooded and our farmland has all gone to waste. No crops can be grown again. They should swap territories, is what I think. <laughs> the two kingdoms are living hells now. Even if you told the truth, we can't simply retreat and wait for death. I understand your rage and desperation, and that's why I told you. It takes remedy to convince you, not evidence. Please take a look at this. The Grand Steeress has prepared a systematic relief plan to cope with the damages. Emberia will provide Shiksal with the blueprint of the Wind Tower. Wind Tower? Huh? Wind Tower? Yes, it can fasten evaporation and drainage. Meanwhile, Emberia will support the reconstruction with the latest tech. For Jormungand, please read this page, Cursor Queen. Emberia will provide 5,000 mobile houses to shelter the homeless. Mobile houses? Building a house takes a month. I doubt you can really deliver. Please rest assured, Cursor Queen. This type of house is easy and fast to build, but can last long years. When did Emberia prepare all these? They sound like inventions from another world. No, they were not prepared for the occasion. The Grand Series developed them long ago for the Teriri concert tour. <laughs> LOL. LOL. <laughs> The wind tower can drain off the water on a rainy day. The mobile houses are for fans queuing up for a signature. If we can't feed our kingdoms, all your promises are no more than lip service. We have just the answers for that. The twins found a nourishing staple in the valley that ripes in four months. Rosalia? Lilia? It's exactly what they are having. It's named Golden Potato. There are some baked ones for you to taste. It smells good and tastes delicious. But we are out of time. Shiksal would be a kingdom of corpses when it ripes. Don't worry. If our peace treaty goes through, Emberia will supply enough food to feed your people for four months. How much food do you think is needed to sustain for four months? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well, how about eight million tons? I signaled Kongming with a seemingly casual side glance, and she gave me a nod that's almost unnoticeable. Fine. Eight million tons, not a gram short. W what Captain, this is not child's play. An empty promise will cost you dearly. I'd never play with fire when it comes to diplomacy. Besides, Imperia will dredge the water courses in three years. Gosh, this is like... Is it, is it really working out like this? I... Really? I mean, we still have to find out what happens, right? We will unite. Um, um, we will build traffic hubs and lead international trade to prosperity. Emberia will also freely share the latest technology so that all three kingdoms can benefit equally from progress. Um, if you sign the treaty today, peace and prosperity across the realm will become reality in no time. What do you think, Arch Emperor? Imperator? <laughs> I need more convincing than sweet words. Before I could further explain, a huge boom sent the whole cave shivering with falling rocks. What happened? Thunderous monsters, monster roars were felt all throughout the cave, but the Arc Imperator and Corsa Queen didn't even blink. They're here again. I'll lead the soldiers to attack them from behind. These monsters are outrageous. Never know when to give up. Today is the day for them to learn the hard lesson. Okay, let's fight them. <laughs> let's just... Ooh, Himeko. Himeko. <laughs> I really like her. The story is interesting. But actually... Like, if this works, everything would be fine, right? Oh, we are really fighting together, huh? That is cool. Like... That they are really fighting together. It's not just it's not just us and the story says we are fighting together, but yeah, I didn't dodge that. I did not dodge that one. Well, ipsy. Okay, next one. Next please. It's fun that we always almost always fight Himiko though. Something is coming. Careful. Oh my god. Beast King? Oh no, not this one. I fought this monster a lot of times these last few days and it annoys me i really do not like this monster because it always freezes me is there a way that i cannot get frozen 
If so, I really need to know. <laughs> Gosh, that was a thing. <laughs> I really hate that monster. That specific one. I do not like being frozen in place. I mean, I think I could dodge it. Sometimes I can, but sometimes it doesn't work. So I'm really not sure. Okay. So, now that the monster is defeated. With a mighty blow from the Corsair Queen, the monster bit the dust. Where were we just now? After the chaos, the cave became an even bigger mess. The Corsair Queen pulled over a crate and sat down casually. She's so cool! <laughs> well, you've all seen what Jormungand has turned into now. Captain's terms sound tempting, but they are too little too late. We have a conclusion now and there's no need to talk more. Guards, escort our guests. The Cossack Queen snapped her finger and the next moment we were surrounded by fierce looking pirates. Wait! Cossack Queen, if another beast appears, how will you handle it then? Nonsense. Yama, Amorphous and Hodo, they are not wild animals you run into every day. Hold on, you mean there are other beasts like Hodo that may ravage the realm? Captain saw it with his own eyes. Do you know why Captain would return here years later? I'm listening. Captain roamed the realm and visited a secluded place where writings on the cliff tell the legend of the ten beasts. Oh god, oh my god, how do you say that? Jung... Hmm... Jungchi, the first and fiercest of the ten, has the resemblance of tiger and eagle. Descendants descends every few centuries. Exactly. Have you two heard about this beast? It does exist. You've heard about it too? Yes, there are six old folk tales that speak of a similar beast. Well, then the Ark Imperator must know how destructive the beast can be. After Hodo, I saw the ominous sign of a red moon. Hodo is only the harbinger of the true savagery. Oh my god, that's... If they... Is that true? That's... No. Thousand years ago, Emberia slain Yama, Amorphous and sealed Hodo. Kongming knows the beasts better than everyone. You can overturn Emberia today, but when another beast comes, what will your chances be? And your missing soldiers are still trapped in the valley. Emberia can help find them if a deal is struck today. I understand you're fighting for your justice, but no one has anything to gain from this nasty war. The Ark Imperator and Corsair Queen both became silent. Can I count on you about the 8 million tons of rice in a month? You have my word. Well, if we don't see the food aid in a month, this treaty will be nullified and our rage will burn down everything. Fair enough, but you retreat tonight from Amberia. If we deliver on our end, you must fully honor the terms. Papers and brush pens were president presented. The terms were written down and signed by the three parties. Well, that's it. I hope you can be trusted, founder of Amberia. Amberia will honor the pact. Th did everything work out? Really? Oh my god. <laughs> I don't want to be relieved yet, just yet because I'm scared. With the signed treaty, Kongming and I left the command and soon returned to Moon Amberia. Roamed the realm. Kongming, I didn't know you were such an elegant liar. <laughs> oh! I thought about it. She probably meant when we were traveling through time. <laughs> and the feeling is mutual. By the way, did you read some astrology books? Even I was almost fooled by you. Oh, I was simply imitating your way of speaking. <laughs> you. Kongming Stan hit my head before I could dodge. <laughs> that should put an end to it. Ah, my heart feels much lighter now. A flurry of hurried footsteps sounded. I stopped and saw Rita and Theresa rushing over with worried faces. Your majesty took too much risk venturing over the border. If we didn't make it on time... Well, we've returned, safe and sound. Kongming led in the front while Rita and Theresa followed her closely. I sighed softly in relief behind their backs. The guards told us you promised 8 million tons of rice in a month in exchange for peace. Is it true? 8 million tons? That's the entirety of our stock. How could we manage to feed our people then? In fact, I was about to explain when the robotic voice sounded again at this very inconvenient time. Oh, countdown. 
Nine seconds. Teleportation terminating. What? Not again. Not now. Where are we transported now? Overwhelming blackness took away my consciousness in no time. The last image I saw was their silhouettes under the high moon. Everything has to work out now, right? Like, everything did work out. Everything is okay? Lantern light, please? My consciousness came back. I heard scattered footsteps and I saw the almost too familiar wooden screen. Some handmaids passed by. I wobbled to get on my feet and tried to ask them what happened. Excuse me, is Kongming... No one paid me any heed. They rushed past with an anxious faces. Oh no, not not anxious. No, Kongming is not... A strong faintness overwhelmed me. I took a deep breath and began to sprint for the central palace. My head was a mess. I couldn't help thinking about what I had done wrong and how could I make it right. I'm scared. I'm so scared with the captain. It's a long, long way. When I finally reached out my hand to the door, my hand was quivering all over. That's enough. I won't be able to lift my legs with this on. Should we try? I want to try it too. Okay. <sighs> Loud laughters came from behind the door. I pushed the door open, not knowing what to expect. Captain? Where have you been? Why are you all so surprised? What happened? Mannerless fool! You left without a word and now you swagger in like nothing has happened. The four of us were taking a walk and you simply vanished in a puff of smoke. You could have given us a notice. <laughs> Actually, I couldn't. <laughs> Your transgression and insolence call for proper punishment. If it's you... <laughs> Okay, no, 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 not, not, uh, waterboarding, public shaming, or flogging. What's on your mind, your majesty? Nothing of these things, please. No, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Rita gave me a wicked smile and Kongming studied my reactions with great curiosity. Wait, what? Never mind, since you've returned, I'll graciously forgive your misconduct. Well, your majesty certainly wasn't gracious when you were stumping the floor for captains missing earlier. <laughs> Out. <laughs> it never happened. Looks like Captain is spared then. Come on, you weren't being serious, right? Rita, let's follow through the plan. Sure. Captain, please excuse us for a moment. Hmm? What plan? They retreated to the inner room. After a flurry of chuckles, Kongming's voice passed over. Wait, Rita, I'm not wearing this flower. It's too childish. Your Majesty, it's the latest fashion. It complements your dress like nothing else. Here, let me do it for you. Look how fabulous you are, Your Majesty. Why are you blushing? Uh, please be still, Your Majesty. Ah, uh, no, it's tickling. <laughs> when I couldn't be more confused, Rita let out a soft chuckle again. All right, it's finished. <laughs> oh. Captain, take a guess now. Which one is Kongming? Yeah, tell us. Okay, it has to be right. It has to be her. Because she changed and she did not want to wear some flowers and she tricked us earlier. <laughs> I got it. You can't, you can't fool me. Come on, it's too easy. Of course it's... Um... Stop teasing Captain now. It's almost time. Fine, I'll get dressed. <laughs> See, I knew it. Captain, how does it look on me? You look cute. No, really pretty. It looks bad? Uh, no, I was lost for words. This dress is specially tailored for Shishi. Captain, Captain, you're so insensitive. It looks very nice, actually. Never mind, I don't care about your opinion. Still, you have no excuse to be unprepared for the special occasion. As Kongming spoke, she fixed a jade amulet to my belt. This would do for now. It's time for us to set off. Where to? Why, the lantern fair, of course. We'll watch the lantern show and pray for good fortune with the people of Umberia. <sighs> Ooh. Let's go, Captain. It's a summer evening of refreshing breezes and we arrived at a star pavilion in fast wagons. Oh, that, that's a cool conclusion, like seeing the lanterns. I hope we will see lanterns. 
The lantern right is actually... Okay, by the time this video will go up, I think the lantern right is either already happening or really close in Genshin Impact. And I'm hyped for that one as well. So that's why I'm really hyped right now. Because it's, 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 such, it's such a neat detail. And such, that's so beautiful and pretty and I like it. <laughs> I like pretty stuff. Um, every house was decorated with colored glazed lanterns and children were running around the corners with pinwheels. We're seeing a lot of new and beautiful lanterns tonight. Yes, a few days ago a craftsman came and he is said to be a master of lanterns. Maybe we can invite him to the palace. That won't be necessary. A river of lanterns flew with the passing crowds. The three girls were having a really good time in the festive scene. But for me? Everything looked unreal. It's all too good to be true. Don't say that. Don't scare me. Don't say that. <laughs> um... How are things going with Jormungand and Shiksa? Thanks to Captain, trade has opened up and the three kingdoms are enter entering a mutual beneficial relationship. Really? We handed out seed rice to the farmers on the peace talk date and exactly one month later new crops were harvested. Well, the credit goes to the boosted crop developed by Kongming. It drives on a month. That's mind-blowing magic. Kongming Sama came up with a lot of new stuff at the ruins, and the Imperial re Repository almost can't hold them all. There is use for each and every one of them. As we spoke, the wagons had taken us to the center of Muneberia. A wooden tower stood out among all the shops and houses. Numerous lanterns danced to the rhythm of the wind. That's probably the star pavilion they talked about. Are you looking at the tall building over there? That's where the prayers will be held tonight. Prayers? It's a tradition of the Empire. Every Shishi night, people parade the city and pray for happiness and prosperity. In my eyes, these festivals are only meant to serve people's selfish desires. We eat Tengun on Lantern Festival and climb mountains on Double Ninth. Must do activities for every festival. Kongming supported her head with one hand and cheeked the passing crowds with indifferent, tired eyes. Well, even so, these special days do give us a reason to reunite for a pleasant time, don't they? In the festive atmosphere, even normal views and mundane activities may bring a fresh taste. Is it so? Kongming tututut in the disapproval and I turned away from the awkwardness. The wagons came to a stop shortly. We've arrived. With Imperial Guards lined up on the side, Kongming walked Rita and Theresa to the Star Pavilion. I leave it to you two. Sure, we can handle it. Are you sure you're not coming? Are you sure not to come along? Citizens of Moon and Beria heard your return and would be honored by your presence. The truth is, the long years at the altar have washed away my memory of the ceremony. Theresa can host it better. I actually totally forgot that Theresa is in charge. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. It only changed after uh, Rita died. As you wish then. Please take care of Her Majesty, Captain. Uh? Rita and Theresa can have all the overly sophisticated ceremony and speeches. While we join the crowd to have some fun. Oh yeah, that's... Oh yes, huh? <laughs> the next moment I was forcibly dragged by Kongming into the sea of people. So many people here to see the boat parade. Good thing they're all high tail boats today. I can at least see the orchid lanterns hanging at the stern. Why don't you sit on my shoulders and see the whole picture? <laughs> Cute! No sooner had I finished my words than a fan slap hit my shoulder, but I thought it was a cute idea. <clears throat> the parade is for people like you who haven't seen much of the world, and I've seen it every single year. But the childlike joy on her face betrayed her pretended no poise. Her eyes could hardly leave the lanterns. Ah, oh, <laughs> this is so adorable. This is this is beautiful, and I'm glad that everything turned out all right. I was I was really scared that it would go on and on and on, but like in shorter versions, but like we would see death all over. Glad that that's not the case. It's actually a happy <laughs> happy event. It's actually a happy <laughs> happy event. <laughs> Oh, that's so pretty. 
Oh, wow. I love that. Oh, the colors. <gasps> ah, it's Feng Sweet sh Shop. I want red bean mochi and sugar hearts. Huh? I thought you had been here many times and you must have plenty of these before. Sure, that's why I know what tastes good and what doesn't. And you've got to taste smiley face at the Shishi Fair. A grand parade of oil, flour, sugar and honey. Yeah, I got it. Tell me what you want and I'll go get them for you. Sweet milky balls and red bean mochi. Three of each. Osmantus pudding, double sugar and two ru rubing. Can you really stomach that much? Wait, have you finished? Wait, she has finished like already? Kong Ming looked up at me. Pointed at the crystal cake stand and began to play cute with her big watery eyes. Don't play cute on me. <laughs> that that will probably work. Mr. Assassin, please. Yeah, yeah, why not? Huh? What did you just call me? Kung Ming ignored me, handed me all the desserts, and before I got a firm grip, she had dragged me to the next shop. So she does know. <laughs> hey, sugar fingers over there. Come on, before there's nothing left for us. Weird. This is weird. Yes. She's unmistakably Kongming. But right now she feels insanely different. Is it the festive atmosphere? Well, I certainly won't mind if her happy-go-lucky side can last. Are you happy now? What's that smile? <laughs> happy? What? I couldn't stand your long face all the way, so I decided to tease you a bit. That was teasing. <laughs> now you're grinning like an idiot. I hope you're not getting any wrong ideas. I thought you were just cute, that's all. <laughs> Kongming unfolded the paper cover of the fleshy steamed mutton bun, blew it slightly colder and began to enjoy it. Underneath the flower lanterns, her face had a rosy sheen that could be easily mistaken for a flush. Come on, the happier one of us is definitely... Who? Who is it? Kongming's cold gaze froze my tongue. Oh. <laughs> um. Oh, the sugar figures are ready. <laughs> the two shining sugar figures handed over by the master came to my rescue and diverted Kongming's attention. Two funny looking sugar figures, to be honest. Kongming couldn't help but burst into laughter. Hey, drop that look. You're not... Thinking these two figures look like us, are you? <laughs> they are in our likeness, because I say so. Now let's check out the other side. This is all so cute. Kongwi nipped at the figure while watching the lanterns, and uh, I was following her closely with two hands full. As the parade fleet roamed by, thousands of lanterns lit up the sky like the stars. The whole world had gone festive. Lanterns, fabulous lanterns, at reasonable prices. With bells tinkling, a lantern craftsman holding a black umbrella chanted as he passed us by. Wait, black umbrella? No, I'm scared. No, 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 stop. Please, please, let it be, let it be coincidence, okay? That must be the lantern mask that Theresa talked about. These lanterns look really nice, but I feel something is lacking. What? You expect them to fly like birds? No, it's not what I meant. Oh my god, no. No, it's not what I meant. Well, that wouldn't be too hard. Captain, are you up for a little challenge? I guess. What is it? Kongming turned around and her eyes shone bright like stars. We'll make a lantern that can fly like a bird. Really? Oh, that is the door. Wait. <laughs> Collect enough materials. Okay, we are fighting but collecting. Okay, well, let's do that then. This is all really just so sweet and i really like that i just really i'm really paranoid because <laughs> i don't know what to expect so we already got a paper and rosa let's go get some bamboos from the forest okay okay, okay. I'm, I'm just really paranoid because i'm not sure if really everything will stay positive but i do hope so because the thing is i don't know how long this event is so i don't know if we are at the end and if i can be relaxed and happy or if I... Oh. Or if I still have to be worried, kind of. Was it really coincidence with the black umbrella? Or does it... Or is it an insider? I mean... Is it a person that... That is well known? Like, in the community? <laughs> Kongmi. 
What is it? Why would you want to make a sky lantern all of a sudden? Is it also a shishi tradition? Of course not. It's just... I just thought of an old promise. Oh, right. She promised us that we would... Oh, that we, that we would make a... No, that actually... Kind of I said that I would make... I, not I. The captain. Um, the captain promised to make a lantern for her, right? Oh, I'm glad that I can do one together now. These should be enough. Thank you, Captain. Oh, do, I, do we have to walk? We've been needing them to make sky lanterns. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't. <laughs> like, why, why do they have to be the enemies right now? We are just collecting bamboo. Okay, but it's probably realistic, huh? That's actually something I was wondering anyway. Like... The, in this whole story like the people were just living in the city and everything like peacefully so are honkai like not too often there it's actually it's the same with the with the visual novel i thought that there as well like a honkai literally not appearing very often or not in places where many humans are oh this place is beautiful let's make the sky lanterns here captain Perfect. <laughs> Actually, that was just like a little thing I was thinking about in this story and in the anti-entropy visual novel because people just seem to live like normally. So I was wondering, wondering how, like, how Honkai affects them, like, really, like, do they just pop up like wild animals or what's going on? <laughs> okay, will we get like? <gasps> Pretty! Oh my god, I love this aesthetic so much. Kongming spread this thin paper, cropped it into five equal ports, and carefully placed them on the bamboo threads. It's been a long time since I did this. I'm not sure if I can still make it work. It will fly. Technically, as long as the paper holds and the rosin burns, it can keep ascending. Kongming squinted at me and chuckled. I could only recite more of the high school physics I learned to sound right. The look on your face is precious when you try to explain something like a teacher. But tonight is the last night you stay here, right? Huh? I didn't say so. You said nothing, but it's written all over your face. I've been working on my formation these three months with the hope of sending you back to your world. I knew you'd leave someday, but it's much sooner than I expected. All right, we might as well enjoy the last night. We have lantern fair every year, but this time is different. Captain, can you see the tower over there? In a while, Rita and Theresa will ascend the tower and hold prayers for good fortune shared by all of Amberia. I followed Kongming's eyes and found the majestic tower. Captain, do you think our prayers will reach the stars, thousands of miles above us? I didn't know the answer. But Kongming didn't seem to mind either. She adjusted the skeleton so the lantern can fly. It's done. Maybe you can write a wish on the sky lantern and it will bring your wish to the stars. Ah, yes. The lantern fire twinkled like a star, putting a soft glow on her somewhat wistful face. She handed the lantern to me. Do you have a wish to write on the lantern? Huh? For real? Uh, let me think. Think it is part of the celebration. Maybe the festive atmosphere does indeed make it special. That sounds familiar. Alright, I won't tease you more. Take your time while I return to the star pavilion for her brush pen. I'll go with you. No need. I'll take the shortcut and be back soon. Besides, you can't walk fast holding the lantern in the crowds. Just wait for me here and I'll be back before you know it. I'm getting paranoid again. Is she, is she just sending us off, like in the future, with the sky lantern, so that we can lit it up then? Kongmin, oh, this is so pretty! <laughs> Gosh, I just love the art, like all of the art. Kongmin smiled as she walked across the timber bridge and disappeared in the bamboo groove. What should my wish be? World peace? Nah, it's too unoriginal. Safely back to Hyperion? That sounds better. Forget it. No need to take this seriously. It won't grant my wish like the golem. 
But what took Kung, Kung Ling so long? I'll go find her. I took the shortcut to the city, with my hands protecting the lantern from the crowds and my eyes searching for her. Noises from the fair passed over. On the oiled tower, tens of hanged flowers' lanterns were dancing with the wind. But the next instant... What? No! Fuck! I knew I can't trust anything! No! Why? What? The beams tumbled and Star Pavilion was set on fire. The sparks hit the trees nearby and the city turned red. Wait, did Kong Ming knew? Because she was... She, she was acting weird. Wait, what? No. I began to sprint. Heavy smoke engulfed the city, and the blissful Shishia Lantern Fair turned into a disaster movie. The block around the tower was full of wooden structures, and that allowed the fire to run wild unstoppably. Kongming, Rita, Theresa! Stay clear, the area is locked down to contain the fire. Do not approach. You... have you seen Kongming? The guards are searching. Are you sure Her Majesty is here? She returned to the Star Pavilion for a pen. Let me through, I'll find her. No, you shall not pass. Let me go. The guards blocked my path and held my arms. I wriggled free and dashed to the fire. Kongming! As I ran into the wall of fire and tried to get around it, a burned out beam crumbled and hit hard on my back. But I could feel no pain as if all my senses had been severed. All I could hear was their names ringing in my head. I will save you. Each and every one of you. Step back. Do you have a death wish or something? The tower is on fire and no one can make it out. We found lots of explosives southwest of the tower. Someone may have planted them. Watch out. Back off. Back off. Everyone, back off. No one can make it out. Lots of explosives. Cries, screams and other noises surged into my ears. But my world had quieted down into absolute silence. I thought I had directed history to a happy ending, but everything I built, built fell apart in a wink like a house of cards. It's collapsing. Run. Keep away from it. The crowds rushed by and pushed me away from the fire. I reached out my hand, but the only thing I caught was air. No, it's not over. It can't be over yet. Miss Iron Fist, if I can find her, there's still a chance to turn it around. The crowds were in my way. The guards were in my way. The fire was in my way. Something intangible was holding me back like a rising tide. I had no choice but to throw myself headfirst into it. I grabbed the rail on the side to steady myself and slowly pushed myself against the crowds. Having passed the guards, I began to make a desperate run to the central palace. If I had known it earlier, if I stopped Kongming from returning to Star Pavilion, if I disarmed the bombs, if... But I can still turn back time and make things right. I hope, I really hope so. The fire had not reached Kongming's room and I fumbled my way to Miss Iron Fist in the dense smoke. Like a desert traveler finding a bottle of water, I clung to her cold metal fist without any care for the electric shock. Positioning anchor complete. Initiating transfer. This time, I'll make it right. This time, I save everyone. In my blurred vision, a burning crossbeam fell down over my head. Everything went to dust in the sea of fire. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, okay, why will you do this fight? Like, we will just fight this one and I will talk a bit because... <sighs> God damn it! <laughs> why did my paranoia have to be right? I... <sighs> I was paranoid, like, the moment we saw this, 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 um, black umbrella man. Because I don't remember if it was Lilia or Rosalia, but one of them mentioned it mentioned it and uh and that's what makes me really scared because this is not good 
Like, if everything is going down to this one. So, so we probably have to go back. And I think we should not just go back to before the fairy began, like before the festival began. But I think we have to go back further. Like when the, when the troops disappeared. We have to stop that because this village had, like, quote unquote... This man with the black umbrella. He has to have something to do with it. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just grasping for straws. I don't I don't care and I don't know, but But I really think that this is Oh my god. Like that this man is the key to everything. And I'm curious. Like what why? What? Why? <laughs> why is everything happening? And what does this man want? Honestly, that is that is one of the biggest questions for me right now. I mean, what does this man gain from all of this? Who is he? Is he also a time traveler, maybe? Because he can also kind of change the course of history. I mean, hmm, maybe. Oh, doesn't he? Actually, maybe not. But I mean, this they could be a traveler. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so this man, or like his, I don't know, his man, like. The one who are definitely working for the man with the black umbrella. They have to... I mean, they have to have to plant the explosive there. That, that one should be clear, I think. I hope. I, I hope, I think. <laughs> I'm not even sure. God damn it. This story is so cool. Like, it's just an event. But it's so cool. Oh my god. Wanted to use this fight anyway to just point out that this man with the black mirror is sus AF. <laughs> That's honestly everything I wanted to point out. Because he is the one thing that was mentioned twice. And mentioning something twice in a game like Honkai, where everything is so thought out, I don't think it's a coincidence. God damn it. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. I, I, I completely fucked up this fight though. <laughs> Well, I just, I, I, anyway, I just wanted to use it to talk anyway, so that's not too bad. <laughs> oh god, let's see where this is going. And <gasps> where are we? <gasps> Did we travel back to this moment? Oh, that's... Are you happy now? Happy? What do you mean? Words came out faster than my consciousness restored. My heart was racing like mad. I held my breath to avoid smoke in my no nose. My fingers still ached, ached from the electric charge and screams, cries, and screams, cries were still lingering in my ears. Then everything went quiet. The noises rushed in. Cries, laughter, shouts. The lively fair was reaching its height. Oh, I'm back. Back to a few hours ago, on the dreamlike main street. The star pavilion still stood tall among, amidst the bustling streets with dazzling flower lanterns dangling in the wind. I see. Previously, the past I went back to didn't have me in it, so it's more like a transfer. But this time, the past I've returned to had me in it, so my consciousness was directly overwritten on the old me? No. It's too soon to jump to the conclusion now, but it does look very much like what I presumed. Slightly relieved, I didn't even notice I was holding something and subconsciously let go. Ah, oh, my Osmantus pudding! Hey, why did you drop them? That's when I saw all sorts of desserts drop onto the ground. Oh, sorry, I got carried away. Right, last time Kongmin did nag me for a lot of desserts. I couldn't stand your long face all the way, so I decided to tease you a bit. Your dopey face made me think you took it seriously, but now I know your mind wandered elsewhere. <laughs> Red bean mochi. Three. Sweet milky balls. Three. Hmm, the numbers are correct. I'll let you off the hook this time. Still the jostling crowds. Everything was exactly the same as the last time. Oh god, please, Captain, please remember the man with the black umbrella. I can't be... I, I'm not mad, right? It can't be mentioned twice. <laughs> I'm still holding on to this. 
If I do nothing, history would only repeat itself. The star pavilion will explode and the streets will be consumed by fire. Before that happens, I must find the cause of the explosion. Yes, I must do something, and only I can do something. I looked to Kong Ming, who unfolded the paper cover of the flesh freshly steamed mutton bun and began to enjoy it. I must alert Rita at the Star Pavilion, stop the prayers and keep Kong Ming away from the explosion. I began to recall everything that went down the last time, and think about how to lead Kong Ming to safely tactfully. Lanterns, fabulous lanterns, for just a few coins. As the parade fleet roamed by, thousands of lanterns lit up the sky like the stars. The whole world had gone festive. Lanterns. Right, lanterns. Um, Kong Ming, there's something on my mind. Oh, what is it? These lanterns look really nice, but I feel something is lacking. What, you expect them to fly like birds? Kong Ming gave exactly the same answer as before. Well, that wouldn't be too hard. Captain, are you up for a little challenge? Yes, what comes next starts with making a lantern. I guess, what is it? We'll make a lantern that can fly like a bird. For that we'll need some thin papers. I think we can find it at one of the stores. Thin papers and rosin can all be bought from the street, but bamboo threads can only be found outside the city. That's what I learned from the last time. Yes, we need thin papers, rosin and bamboo threads too. We can buy thin papers and rosin here, but bamboo threads can only come from the bamboo grove outside the city. Bamboo whittling? I can't remember the last time I did this. Captain, let's go and make some bamboo threads together. I tried to avoid her expectant eyes, for I knew I couldn't stay beside her this time. The explosion will take place in the city and she will stay safely in the bamboo groove when it happens. I don't think it's that easy. I really think we should stop the explosion altogether and not just bring people we love to safety, you know. No, splitting up makes faster progress. Oh, <laughs> no, that, that is Captain. No, splitting up makes faster progress. I get thin papers and rosin while you whittle some bamboo threads. This way, we can make more than one. When the prayers are over, we can fly our lanterns on the top of the star pavilion. Hmm, that's not a bad proposal from you. Good, we'll meet again at the city gate later. Oh god, I'm scared. After I sent Kong Ming off with my lingering eyes, I turned around and started to make for the star pavil pavilion. <sighs> Under the night sky, the lanterns of the tower wiggled like twinkling stars. I saw a guard walking out of the gate. Captain? Where's the Chancellor? Please follow me. Captain? Shouldn't you be in Her Majesty's company? What urgent business brought you here? May I have a word? Rita waved the guards off. Please speak your mind, Captain. You have my complete trust. Will you take my word for it if I say bombs have been planted in this building? This pavilion is for ceremonial purposes and heavily guarded. No one can set foot in without official permission. We'll find out if someone has broken in pretty soon. Captain's intel defies common logic. But then again, Captain yourself is someone surrounded by irre irregularities. And this time I can't really say I'm surprised. You are a remarkable person and I choose to put my faith in you one more time. Guards! Warn Theresa Sama, evacuate the building and clear the streets. Captain, where's Her Majesty now? She's in the bamboo group outside the city now. We planned to make lanterns out of bamboo before I came here. A sound plan. Her Majesty would be safer there with the protection of the shadow guards. While I can rest my worries and sh search the explosives here with Captain. You don't have to stay here, Rita. The whole empire is at stake. It's the call of my duty. But I am greatly in your debt, Captain. You care deeply about the Empire and saved us all from destruction. Yeah, but this time we are not sure yet, okay? Don't don't jump to conclu conclusions. Let's less talking, more searching. <laughs> Please accept my humble gratitude. Alright, then we will do just that. Pursuit. Let's go. Oh, we are here again. Hell yeah. 
Hell to the yeah. <laughs> I really love Rita. She's so cool. Use all the explosives. Wait. Wait. Huh? Tap the button. Oh. R. I. I didn't even know what, 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 it, what they wanted. That is mean. Okay, next time I will try to do it a little. I mean. <laughs> I still don't know what they exactly wanted. But whatever. Okay, this is also explosive, right? Huh? No! I. Ah! <laughs> Oh, guys i am sorry i'm afraid things will go really bad if we fail oh my god no i have to get it right okay 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 i did it okay <laughs> i mean i need a few times all right i'm sometimes i just i sometimes i just need more than one try <laughs> to understand things oh god but i hope i don't i hope i don't mess up again I'm sorry, I really... <laughs> I want to concentrate because this really scares me. I mean, defusing bombs? How, how does Rita even know how to do this? I'm so glad I didn't fail. That would be kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but I did it! Yay! Rita, you did well. I... not so much, but that's fine. Okay. All explosives have been cleared. Much obliged for your assistance, Captain. But I still find it unusual. The explosives are in small numbers and not very well concealed. Yeah, something is not right. The strange thing is no one found out. Oh, the strange thing is no one found out, doch. One hour before the ceremony, I'd personally inspect the environment and equipment. It's unlikely that I'd miss it. Hmm. Strange. Rita's inspection should be enough to root out the explosives, even for the last time. This means the Star Pavilion is not going to explode itself, and... The horrible thought froze me and soaked my back with cold sweat. Think. Think hard. I must have overlooked something important. Yeah! Think! Please! Think! <laughs> the explosives we found are not nearly enough to shake the foundation of the Star Pavilion. Last time the whole city was on fire. A horrifying view I wish I would never see to again. The wooden structure of the pavilion can indeed help the fire grow. Thinking back now, when the burned beam hit my back, I also heard a string of explosions. Among the screams, cries and desperate shouts for help, there are other explosives. It's a trap. Other explosives? You mean the ones we found are only a distraction to drop our guard? Yes. And the explosives are very likely hidden in plain sight and overlooked by everyone. The city bell rang, and I counted nine. Each sank my heart even deeper. Captain? I climbed into the window frame and took a lantern from the eaves. The paper and bamboo threads looked normal. This lantern burns wax instead of rosin. But it's still common for lanterns of this type. To take a closer look, I blew out the fire. Break the wax slowly and carefully. Another guard took out a knife to carve out the altar layer. As white wax fell off, a black fluid began to drip. This is not common wax. It's rock oil. Everyone was shocked in disbelief. Rock oil burns longer than wax, but it's also far more volatile and explosive. Someone replaced the wa wax with rock oil, purposefully and skillfully. Only the lower part of the candle was infused with rock oil. It takes a while before the top part burns out and detonates the lantern. Oh god, that is really smart. Way too smart, actually. And the explosion was timed to take place precisely when the celebration reaches its climax. Alert everyone, snuff out all the lanterns in the Star Pavilion, and the whole city, oh my god. Grand Chancellor, the citizens are being evacuated. Who is behind this? What is their purpose? The lanterns are our only lead, but there's no way to narrow it down. More lanterns at the fair than we can possibly count. And we can't track down every lantern marker in the maker in the city. Yeah, that is not... <laughs> Please think, Captain. 
think in connect i really hope i'm not wrong otherwise i'm kind of making a fool of myself <laughs> honestly that is fine rita's eyes glittered on hearing lantern maker thank you for reminding me captain of all the craftsmen that came to moon Imperia lately there's one land maker that stands out oh his lanterns have novel looks and last longer than the others that's why he is exceptionally popular now if he can adjust the formula of the candle to control the burning speed he can certainly make explosive candles and fit them into lanterns for everyone to buy find the craftsman i hope it's right i really do the setup let's go ah <laughs> I'm really nervous. I hope... I really hope it works. Maybe I'm just thinking too complicated, you know. The gleaming and glittering fair dimmed down. Guards were trying to restore order to the streets. Lanterns, fabulous lanterns, for just a few coins. The paddling craftsman's voice sounded in the alley. The black cloak and black umbre umbrella were unmistakable. He was surrounded with his back against the wall. Guards approached slowly with their spears, but the craftsman didn't seem to mind and walked to us casually. I mean, one? I knew it was him! I knew it's it! I knew he's sus! <laughs> okay. Wanna buy a lantern? The only Bagua lanterns in town. Wind blew by. The lantern turns with the wind back and forth. Looks like no more business for me today. This is the last Bagua lantern, and you can have it. He flung the lantern at me, but I didn't catch it. A spear thrust through it, and rock oil began to drip from the tip. The lantern was a distraction. He tried to climb onto the wall, but a scythe got in his way. Rita! Rita came down from above, and the craftsman slid back to miss the scythe by a hair, but the edge met his face. No blood was spilled. Only a human skin mask broke in half and fell down. What? Behind the mask, there was another mask. Who are you? Who sent you? What's your purpose? Oh my god. <laughs> the umbrella is so out of place. <laughs> but probably just because of this picture here. I'm faceless and nameless. Never mind. We have a hundred ways to make you talk. But I must warn you, they might hurt a little. I assume you have cleared all of the city. Pity that the fireworks I long to see are not happening today. You. But if you think that's my purpose, you cannot be more wrong. What? He suddenly burst into a fit of disturbing laughter. My purpose is like the Bagua Lantern. Do not confuse the cause and effect. Quick, open his mouth. The guards swarm to him, but it's too late. Ah, oh, he's killing himself, isn't he? The craftsman's head drooped down and his breath went out. Ah! <laughs> Search him. The guards came back with a sealed potion and inside the potion was a transparent liquid. A poison without color or odor. A well thought out operation. Grand Chancellor, all of the lanterns in the city have been put out. The explosive lanterns are no longer a pro problem and the craftsman is dead. This should be the end of it. It should, but... But somehow the craftsman's last words unsettled me greatly. As it should, because... Ah, uh, so that was probably just one part of a bigger plan. Grand Chancellor, we can't find Her Majesty at the city gate. Oh my god. Wait, did I want to... Especially only her? Like, either kill her or kidnap her? Kongming? Right, I need to make sure she's safe. All uncertainties have been eliminated, but I still couldn't be relieved until I see her. Maybe Her Majesty is having a good time whittling bamboo and lost track of time. Captain, I'll go with you. No. No, I'm scared. I'm so scared. I'm so glad I can play Rita again, but I am really scared. Maybe the plan all along was to either kill or kidnap her. Because, I mean, last time we also didn't find her, right? Who are in this city? Ask around. <gasps> Oh, that's cool. Wait, I cannot... Can I ask? I cannot ask you, huh? Okay. I can ask you, though. Cap, we are looking for a little girl. She wears an orchid pin about this tall. 
I think she went that way. Which way? This way? This way? This way. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little bit blind. It's interesting that they kind of put those spirities here on this map. It's really cool though. I like that. Okay, where did she went now? The little girl who bought two sugar figures? She went that way. Okay, open the way. You know, I see this exclamation mark. We have to go back here anyway. <laughs> Alright, ask around. I have to find here. Fight. Yeah. Because even I know that this is fighting ground. This is still so cool. I love that we can just play these different characters. This is a dead end, Captain. It's not this way. She is so cool. I'm sorry, I have to try a little. Ooh. Uh, like, I don't even know what that is. But it is so cool. Ooh, like it. Okay, so let's talk to you. A little girl in a dark dress. Oh, I remember. She went that way. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. We have to go find her. I really don't... I really think... Ah, but why would anyone do this anyway? Isn't that also a good question? It looks so cool. <laughs> no matter how many times I, I, I do this, this is so cool. Okay. Um... This way. Oh, little child. Hello. That lady who came to buy Rubin? I think she went that way. Okay, then let's go. Gosh. This story is so... <laughs> the monsters are, are so off-putting when, when they come into, into the frame. Um, I really think that there has to be something maybe it's even our fault that, sh that all of this happens anyway but that does not make any lot of sense actually i kind of already forgot so many people wait where could kongming be oh that's it okay <laughs> um i kind of already forgot where it started like until now because it's all started because everyone would die if we would not interfere and now Probably Kongming is still in danger. Like, maybe she alone. But can we change her death is the question. The hour for fireworks drew near, but the crowds were rushing out of the city. Kongming stood by the road on tiptoes, anxiously searching for captain among the crowds. That is her perspective, but what time are we? I wonder if this dress and the sky lantern can remind captain of the past. Ah, What took him so long? Is he lost? I probably should go and find him. He's unbelievable. I might as well buy papers and Rosen myself. I'm not waiting for him all night like a fool. She carefully protected the lantern and trudged against the panicked crowds, making her way to the star pavilion. Strange. All the lanterns went out? Why is everyone... Excuse me, coming through? What happened? Where's Captain now? Ouch! Kongming was too absorbed in her thoughts that she bumped into someone. Oh, sorry. Oh, God. Kongming rubbed her forehead in embarrassment and stepped aside, but only to be seized by the arm. Gotcha. The low voice was only meant to be heard between them two. Huh? <gasps> Intense pain spread from her chest and shut up every nerve to freeze her on the spot and hold her breath. Well, uh, you are... His face was familiar, but Kongming couldn't put a name to it. Wait, what? Why? That scared the living crap out of me. I I can't deal with, 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 with the scary things and that was hella scary. The stranger walked behind Kongming's back casually and whispered something in a low voice. Uh, what's he talking about? Why would it be... Kongmin felt her consciousness escaping her in drips and drabs. Impossible. The stranger laughed mockingly before disappearing in the crowd. Who is it? Finally catching her breath, Kongming found the world falling back from her in slow motion. 
Then she lost her balance and hit the cobblestone ground. She couldn't breathe. She couldn't move. Life was draining away from her while her brain still stumbled to function. A familiar figure came close. She couldn't see clearly, but she believed that Tim. The flower lantern she had carefully protected along the way was lying on the ground, trampled and torn. Kongming gasped desperately to catch her breath. Mr. Assassin. Run. It's dangerous. Fragmented memories began to flow through Kang Ming's head. In these memories, there were always people by her side. People who protected her, spoiled her, and trusted her unconditionally. It's a shame. I won't be able to see the fireworks this year. Uh. The bustling crowd merged with the stars into blurred but warm light, and the calling gradually faded away. I'm feeling warmer now. I'll rest a bit now. A jade potion fell down from the tower and broke, with the poison drops it contained seeping into the ground. What? The correction is done, and poisoning the wine won't be necessary now. On the tower, a man in black overlooked the city behind the rail. The right path leads to the right destination. And the wrong path leads to the wrong destination. We were brought by the path and share the path with her. Now our purpose has been fulfilled and there's no reason for our existence anymore. Huh? The man in black sighed deeply and took off. People come and go. Light brightens and dims. With a short bell chime, the man in black walked into the dark night and vanished. Meanwhile, countless men in black elsewhere in the world also vanished. Huh? Nobody knew when they came, and nobody knew when they were gone. What? Okay. There are our new chapters. What the actual heck? We are going to do another one. That is no questions asked. But, okay, I'm really curious right now. So, these men in black, <laughs> I will call them men in black now, um, they kind of started to exist because Kangwing was alive or because she lived? Is that the case? And because she doesn't live, they don't exist? I mean, that's how I kind of got it. But then they, or maybe so they, <laughs> sorry, kind of have to get my thoughts in order right now. So I think what they were doing is they wanted to make some kind of evil, bad thing, something bad, disappear from the world. And so they wanted to kind of destroy it at the root, which would be Kongming then? Maybe? That's what I'm thinking right now, but we'll jump straight into the next one. Don't worry. Again. <laughs> no. Okay, let's see. Are you happy now? Happy? You must be kidding me. Why? Why is, did, it, did it still end this way? With all the explosive disarmed, how come I failed again this time? Captain. Captain. Kongming. I stared at her blankly and somehow my eyes became sore. I'm back again. The same street, same view. The laughter and peddling words seemed to hurt my ears and the blissful festive sight made my eyes ache. The murderer is somewhere out there, lurking in the crowd. I mean, you have to kind of take Kongming with you. Captain, you're hurting me. I just realized I've been holding Kongming's hand so tight that her delicate hand began to redden. Sorry, I... I didn't mean it. I know. What happened? I... I didn't know where to start. When I finally fought my way through the crowd and reached Kongming, she was lying in her blood pool, gasping painfully and urging me to leave. 
The killing dagger was right beside her, with its black blade fully bathed in blood. I saw blood welled from her fatal wound and tried everything to desperately stop it. I pressed my forehead, my swelling, aching head, couldn't seem to shake the sick crimson off my eyes. God, he must be so traumatized. We, they, <laughs> they. Captain, are you alright? No, it's not the time to rest now. We must leave. Kongming, follow me. Wait, where are we going? I had no time to explain. The only thing that mattered was to take her away to somewhere safe. I don't think you should take her away. Can't you take her with you while... I mean, you kind of disarm all the bombs and just like stay with her, with Rita? They can't fight Rita. I mean, <laughs> maybe that's too simple, but that's... Mm. But we're safe after all. Captain, is the Empire looking at yet another catastrophe? We must get out of here. Captain! She suddenly stopped. Captain, you must be exhausted after all that's happened. Yes. For as long as I could remember, you've always stood by my side through the most trying times. Be it Frodo or the missing soldiers, you carried everything on your back and kept me in the dark. But you don't have to. I'll always be there for you and I wish to share your burdens. Ah, right? You have to tell her. You, you do. No matter what the future has in store, you can tell me and we can get through it together. No. You won't believe it. She will. She believes you. Trust her. <laughs> After all that's happened, I doubt I'd be easily surprised. I can entertain even the most ludicrous possibilities. What if I say I've been through what's going to happen many times? I'd believe it. Don't tease me anymore. I can barely make myself believe. How can you trust me so blindly? Well, I've never ruled out the impossible. But more importantly, I choose to believe you rather than what's logical. So please be open to me, Captain. Is there danger at the fair? Did someone plant explosives? Yes, but that's only the half of it. Too many eyes and ears here. Let's talk somewhere in private. Why not go to Rita? I mean, you still have to stop the explosives. <laughs> I took Kongming to a quiet alley where we could observe the streets. Kongming, beware of the crowd. A moment later, a craftsman holding a black umbrella will pass by, selling his lanterns. A lantern vendor? Yes, he changed the candle formula and replaced the wax with rock oil. Rock oil? Isn't it something highly explosive? Right. The special candle has wax at the top, but rock oil at the bottom. Takes a while for the lantern to explode. Right now. These lanterns are around the city, and even some fitted at the star pavilion come from the craftsman. Is he planning to destroy the whole city? Just like you said, someone is trying to sabotage the fair. And the lesson from the last time is to put out all the lanterns and evacuate the city. I finally said it. I wasn't sure if it's the right thing to do, but at least I wouldn't be alone this time. You did good. It's good to let her know. It's good to confide in people you trust. You have to trust them and you have to let them help you as well. So you found the solution. Well then, what's the other half of it? Someone will try to assassinate you at the fair. I chose the words carefully, trying not to shock her. But to my surprise, she sighs in relief. Oh, that's it. You don't believe me? No, I believe you. Wholeheartedly. But assassination belonged to the lowest level of hazards in my book. <laughs> True. You can't be serious, right? I'm no stranger to hired blades aimed at my throat. I've grown used to it. Kongming waved her hand and two men walked out of the shadow. Unlike unif uniformed guards, they were dressed in festive outfits and could easily pass as ordinary fairgoers. Hidden in plain sight, the formidable shadow guards who only answer to the Grand Seerus. You've heard, Captain. One of you alert Rita now, and the other one stay here on close watch. Aye. The two returned to the shadow like they were never out in the light. The shadow guards should have been able to keep Kongming out of harm's way, but she was still stabbed the last time. True. Captain, are you sure the craftsman will pass by? 
Yes, I'm sure. A parade boat carrying a several meter tall lantern slowly floated by, provoking many woes from the crowd. Weird. Why hasn't he shown up? It's about time. Wait, that is weird. Oh my god, what changed? <gasps> I say we wait no more and seek him out. Maybe something unexpected happened and stalled him. Something unexpected? In theory, everything that comes next is identical to what I experienced before. Why would he change his route? Unless he also travels back in time every time? I don't know. This is complicated. <laughs> There's no reason for him to do so. Something must have happened. Something that messed up the timeline. I began to search my memory. I had a habit of noticing small things and it proved to be very helpful this time. Oh, what is it? What's different this time? Differences lead to more clues and relying too much on assumptions rather than facts doesn't end well. We should act now, Captain. Kongming, are you thinking... Yes, let's seek out the suspect together. No, you'd better leave it to the guards and return to the Imperial Citadel. We can't take this lightly. The best plan is to return immediately and do not give the enemies any chance. Putting the whole city and its people in danger while I hide in a hole. This is not my way. I know you care about the citizens, Kongming, but now is not the time to play the hero. You're in great danger. There are enemies are lurking in the dark. You could die any minute. Only my life matters and the thousands of souls in this city do not count? I understand someone is trying to take my life, and yet you're doing everything to stop it from happening. But to capture the craftsmen and protect the city are the weight of my crown. And we can do both. It's not just one thing. <laughs> Damn. The captain is really... Focused on only one thing. I... Mm. <laughs> it really... Oh my god. This reminds me even more of Steins Gate. Because... Uh, I completely forgot all the names. But he, our main character, was also at a point... Try... I mean, only focused on trying to save his childhood friend. That was his only vision in, I think, one or two episodes, maybe even more, I don't remember. But when he did that and completely ignored everything else, it was so frustrating to watch. Because, ah, you have to, if you are focused on one thing, it's like the tunnel vision, you know? When you're playing a game and you have a tunnel vision, that's mostly not good. At least, like, in League of Legends, it's not. <laughs> And it, Captain reminds me of this right now. With my people in grave and even in danger, how can I possibly put my heart at ease? I appreciate everything you've done, but please respect my duty and conviction. Besides, I still have you by my side. And you once promised to stay by my side no matter how hard it is in the Hodo battle. I now ask you to fulfill your promise, Captain. Kongming reached out her hand. After long hesitation, I took her hand. I'm not leaving you to act alone, so this time, I'll give it all to ensure your safety. I'm counting on it, Captain. Let's go and meet the lantern peddler. Let's track the suspicious lantern vendor. Okay. Oh, we are playing her again. Okay. Oh, God. I'm glad that Captain finally told her. Like, it is really frustrating, like... <laughs> When time travelers keep from their, like, closest friends who would believe them. Focus. Hmm? What do I have to do now? Muddy footprints? Okay. Where else? What, what else is there? Let me ask around. Oh, okay. Excuse me, would you happen to know anything about these muddy footprints? These footprints? Oh, they're from a lantern vendor. Le he left these when he suddenly came out from the bushes. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> okay. Oh, and there are enemies. Well, great. Okay, so he changed his plan. Huh? Right. I mean, he must know about the time travel, then, more or less. I will call it time travel because I don't know what else it could or should be. Okay. Let's move further. Let's search him. I actually really think it's amazing 
how the quests are like we are not just just fighting enemies and we are getting told that we fought and that we found clues but we are legitimately going around in the city and searching and that is cool not a lot of games uh, putting so much thought into it <laughs> which isn't always too bad but what's here more muddy footprints okay do we have to ask around yeah let me ask around child you are probably wait okay <laughs> the explanation mark is so high up i didn't even see it the lantern seller did pass me wait it's a vendor it's not a vendor but he was kind of weird he was in such a hurry that he wasn't even chanting I think, okay <laughs> okay little vendor you're you're yeah <laughs> let's go search gosh i can't wait to find him and like learn why and what is happening yeah we have to ask him even more. Hello. I'm looking for the lantern seller too. He knocked over my syrup cauldron. Oh my. You gotta pay me back. He was in a hurry, but why? All clues gathered. Really? Looks like that craftsman did go this way. But why was he in a hurry? He really has to know about the time travel. And he has to kind of know that Captain is changing things now, right? I want an explanation. <laughs> I want more explanations, really. Kongmin and I took the stairs up. According to the vendors, the craftsman is up to something. Noise from that side. Over there? Behind the corner, we found the craftsman. With his back facing us, he knelt down to finish the man lying on the ground with his dagger. What? The man on the ground was powerless and ready to meet his end. Stop! Kung hurled her fan at the craftsman's head. He sidestepped to evade and stood up. I found the dying man to be the shadow guard sent to alert Rita. <gasps> so that was what changed. Yeah, okay, right. That does actually make a lot of sense because, yeah, okay, that's okay. <laughs> this is this is fine. I got it. Hmm. Looks like everyone is here. Yeah, everyone is here and we are ready to get some information, please. A few rounds later, Kongming drove the craftsman into the corner. He suddenly burst into eerie laughter. His human skin mask cracked and revealed a more disturbing mask underneath. Who are you? I'm faithless and nameless. You tried to murder my shadow guard and spread explosive lanterns in the city. What are you up to? If I let this messenger boy through, I'd be the one lying on the cold ground now. He knows. The craftsman took out a lantern, and I knew it's meant to be a distraction for him to escape. Kongming, stop him! I picked up a stick to deflect the lantern, while Kongming darted ahead and knocked the dagger off his hand. Though cornered with no way to run, the craftsman remained unusually calm. He still has the poison. I suggest you surrender yourself and save us the trouble. Kongming signaled the shadow guard following us to come forward. We outnumber you three to one. The odds are hopelessly against you. Well, I beg to differ. Oh my god. Something came from behind. Without thinking, I put myself behind Kongming and blocked the attack. I heard the sound of my flesh rent open by a blade. Oh my god. Blood spilled out, but I almost felt no pain. Every bit of me was focusing on the dagger. I remember the dagger, the one used to stab Kongming the last time. You've betrayed Emberia, and it's punishable by death. So what? The shadow guard lifted his mask and revealed the black mask underneath, identical to the craftsman. Now the odds have turned against us. The craftsman might be easy to handle, but the shadow guard? Oh god. Are you alright, Captain? Just a scratch. No worries. It's probably not a scratch, but <laughs> yeah. I'm leaving my back to you, Mr. Assassin. Oh my god. Okay, kill all the enemies. Who are those people? Who are they? Like for real. 
I mean, they are they are designed like like kind of kind of like basic enemies that you fight. Oh, impressive! He looks kind of interesting. Now try this. I'm I'm intrigued. The thing is, he is designed like a just like an enemy from you know in game, obviously. But he's also really interesting. Oh wow, they even make it more like difficult for us because like the type is not good for us to fight against. That's really cool actually. I mean, it makes it just a little... it, it takes a little bit longer. But that's it. But it just takes, makes, makes the story a lot more... I mean, real? <laughs> it just kind of feels a little cooler. I love when when stories go like this far to prove hey this is a difficult situation right now you should not uh, you know like one shot out everyone <laughs> and even if it's just something like the type that is not good for us even if it's just that it's still it's still oh my god it's still really cool please just die already all right i'm asking you nicely thank you <laughs> I mean, I love her design and how she looks, but I... It's not... I mean, even if I probably do everything wrong with her, what I can do wrong, she's still not the type of character I like to fight with. <laughs> I think we're at fireworks. Oh my god, this could be the last one, because we have five out of six stargazing notes, so... This should be the last one. Oh my god. With all his shurikens deflected, the craftsman took a fatal blow from Kongming and went out. The Shadow Guard's unexpected moves took Kongming and me by surprise and proved to be difficult to beat. The stabbing pain intensified and I felt strength draining away with cold sweat. Your partner won't be able to help you now. Life is death and in death we live. Who are you? Such is our destination. Destiny. <laughs> Kungmin dashed ahead to strike the Shadow Guard's heart, but he pulled the craftsman's body to block the attack. Hehe! <laughs> Shielding yourself with your partner's corpse, I wonder how he would feel if he came back to life. Huh. <laughs> I believe your partner would gladly block for you too in his death. I actually believe so too. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta be with him on this part, but who are they? What is their objective? The shadow guard flashed behind Kongming's back for a lightning fast flash. Slash. Oh. Captain! I blocked it. Don't worry, I'm fine. You're distracted. You have a weakness. You can't beat me. We'll see about that. It was then I realized the dying shadow guard on the ground was missing. Oh? Oh! The cold black dagger came again at Kongming. I meant to block it, block it, but my body felt heavy and clumsy like a rock. That's enough! The shadow guard froze as Rita's scythe had come less than an inch from his neck. Hell yeah. Scores of guards approached. The shining spear tips around him meant any rash move would forfeit his life. You've lost, traitor. Who is your master? Huh. I'm doing no one's bidding. My mission is to correct. Correct what? Please, explain. Poison in his mouth! The guards came close to clamp his mouth open. But it's too late. You reap what you sow. No escape from consequences. With a final grim laugh, the shadow's guard lost his breath. Sorry, your majesty. I came late. I was making preparations for the prayers. If not for the gravely wounded shadow guard who came to alert me. Okay, oh, thank goodness he, he, wow, he actually fulfilled his mission. That is respect. <laughs> you came at the right time, the wounded shadow guard. So he fled while we fought the masked man and warned Rita. The guards carried the two bodies out of the alley and some of them stayed to address my wounds. The wounds are patched up. Thank goodness they missed the fatal parts, but Captain still needs to visit a doctor. Are you alright, Captain? Just some stinks. Don't even hurt. 
All right, the lanterns at the Star Pavilion have rock oil inside Rita. Rest assured, Captain. All of them were put out and the explosives were cleared. The Risa-sama is evacuating the city. I've prepared a carriage for you and Her Majesty. Good. Captain, can you still walk? Don't worry for me. I'm a tough guy. Kongming spoke no more and quietly helped me get on the carriage. It just occurred to me that the bloodstains on me might startle everyone. Seeing their former Grand Series in such a sorry state might cause a public panic. That can be taken care of. We can stop by the tailor's shop and buy a new dress. It's right ahead. I see. The lanterns on the street went out one by one. Guards rushed around, around leading the panicly citizens to evacuate. I mean, it seems to be all good now. But why and what? Luckily, the tailor's shop was still open. Rita came back to the carriage with a new dress in hand. Could you excuse yourself for a moment while Her Majesty changed inside, Captain? Huh? Oh, of course. Your Majesty, please allow me to change for you. No need, Rita. I'll do it myself. Just wait for me outside, will you? Why am I scared? Well, I don't have to be scared right now, right? I'm scared! Ah! <laughs> the curtain was drawn and Rita got out of the carriage too. Thank goodness Her Majesty and Captain sent the Shadow Guard to warn me, or else the city would burn now. Is he alright? The doctors are tending him now, but the hasty run worsened his wounds. He may never be a Shadow Guard again. Oh god! I feel so sorry for him. He, l he really did it. He saved everyone. Honestly, he is the hero. <laughs> because even though he was gravely wounded, he still carried it out. That is... I think that's amazing. I like him. Whoever the Shadow Guard is, I like him. For his loyalty, I would ask Her Majesty to grant him fortune and status. Yeah, that's... I hope that's granted. <laughs> he deserved this. But Captain, how do you know there's rock oil in the lantern candles? I was about to explain when a huge explosion came from the building behind and fire sprang at us. Rattled by the sudden boom, the horses began to charge ahead like mad. My hand acted before my brain and grabbed one of the beams of the carriage, but only to be flung off soon. Kongming is still in the carriage. You two, block the carriage. Kongming, get out of the carriage now. Behind me were burning houses and people crying for help while in front of me, the carriage ran wild and far. It's on fire! The fire is too big, not enough water! Fuck, what happened? Guards, spread out to fight the fire and send a team for water. We must stop the fire getting to the firework shops. Oh god. Let's get to the carriage, Captain. The carriage left a path of chaos as it trampled across the city. Residents fled their burning houses in great panic. Too many people here! The disoriented crowds began to slow us down. Rita leaped onto the roofs and began to pick up her speed. Through the fire, I saw a black figure with a black umbrella blocking Rita's way. Another one. The law of consequence bends for no one. You're trying in vain to stop the inevitable. Is it inevitable? Th is it always happening? Get out of my way. The swinging scythes passed right through the man, and he vanished in a puff of smoke. Grand Chancellor, the carriage is running out of the city. Don't lose it. Oh my god. The ruts look messy. The carriage may have lost control. Some wood chips. Maybe the carriage hit a rock here. The carriage should be right ahead. Oh god. It took us long to finally find the carriage. The wounded driver was lying on the ground, and the horses broke loose. Like, that, that, that's maybe not the right timing for that, but I'm glad the horses are fine. <laughs> Someone has to say that. <laughs> God. Seems like it rolled over at the hill and took heavy hits. The driver is dead. Fear grasped me by the throat and I couldn't breathe. Rita, have you found Kongmin? She's not in the carriage. And not around it either. Maybe she escaped before the colli collision? Let's keep searching. Her Majesty couldn't be far off. I am way too scared. 
I am going to skate. Does this event have a happy ending? I'm actually not sure right now. Because those shadow figures really do everything to make me believe that it is inevitable. That it can be helped. And I'm scared. This dark red liquid. Is it blood? I mean, probably. Why do I have to... Oh, of course. Because they really... Like, everything is happening no matter what we do, kind of. So, what if... It is really inevitable to change, but... But then why would we do this? Like, mm, no, it has to be... There has to be a way to change everything, I think. The question is... How? How? And, like, I mean, there are a lot of those uh, shadow figures, like those men. So. And they don't seem to be human. So, what is it even in our possibilities to do? Like, I really don't believe in a happy ending anymore. This pendant looks exactly the same as the one on Her Majesty. Looks like we are heading in the right direction. I mean, maybe I want to talk to, to the shadow figures again. Because maybe they say something that is a good hint, you know? And I really hope that. Because we need more hints. <laughs> is there even a good, like, a, a conclusion to this story? I hope so. I really do. This is Her Majesty's hairpin. Uh, yeah. Oh god. Okay. Story! Give me story! Please! Please? Alright. Too quiet. The dark woods were deadly quiet, and the deeper I reached, the more eerie it felt. Kongming! Kongming! No reply. No one but us two in the grove. Here, a fan. That's her majesty's. She bought it from the fair some years ago, and she always keeps it around. Her majesty should be very close. The blue folded fan with gold trims on the bamboo skeleton. The emberia on the fan was clearly Kongming's writing. The night sky was suddenly lit up by the stashed fireworks. The bamboo groove became bright as day for a second. And in that short second I saw... fireworks bloomed in the sky and embers fell like shooting stars oh gosh why did they do this this is this is so mean because she even said she wants to see the fireworks oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. more fireworks bloomed in the sky and embers fell like shooting stars everything became clear Kongming she was leaning against a rock and gazing up into the sky with the fan by her hand. She felt cold and the light in her eyes had gone out. Kongming, wake up, can you hear me? Wind rose, bringing the rhythmical firework explosion and cries for help from the city. The night sky became a massive garden filled with dazzling blossoms of fireworks. Light blinded my eyes. The world went still, and my blood was frozen. Is it... Is her death inevitable? Like, we can't change her death? Because that is actually... Only she died in every past or like every possibility we visited, right? Because even in the start, she was also dead. No. No. Kongming. Kongming. Captain, please stop now. Her Majesty can never answer you again. No. This can't be. Darkness devoured me, 
No light in my world. Nowhere to run. I was completely lost. Tesla Zero. I stumbled ahead, but no matter how far I ran, the future I longed for remained a mirage I could never touch. My body became heavier and heavier until my legs defied my will to move. But I can't stop yet. Not here. Not now. So there is... Okay, this was not the end. I am so glad that it's not the end. <gasps> the end is already open? We can do this? Okay, guys, this will be an XXL episode. <laughs> we are going to do this because I'm not, I don't want to stop right now. I don't want to stop and I won't stop. So let's go. Oh my God, against the current. Solution to the insoluble. <sighs> okay. I'm back. What should I do now? Think. Think hard. Explosions. I must stop the explosions. I don't know what caused the explosion. I have no time. I... I really don't think that we can solve this by going after the explosions. Because the explosions are just like little bits of like the reason why everything happens. At least I could stop Kongming from getting into the deadly carriage. Mm -mm. Then something else would happen. Kongming, follow me to get out on foot. We can't stay here. There will be explosions. Help! I couldn't move my leg now. Theresa? Why would she be here? We need to help her. Stay here. I'll go help her. No one is dying on me this time. The supporting pillars are about to give in. Come out now. Watch out, Captain. Oh, God. Oh, God. I lived this time, but they died to save me. Oh, my God. I can't. This game, it, it makes me cry a lot. Gosh. But they died to save me. I... What can I do? How can I change this bloody fate? What if... I tell Kongmin to get into the carriage earlier? Uh. Space-time anchor loaded. Tesla Zero charging. Charging. Charging complete. Initiating transfer. What is happening? Yes. I can tell her to get into the carriage before the explosion. Oh no, we are living through many cycles now. Oh god, this hurts. Run, don't look back. This time, I decided to stay by her side. The horses weren't rattled, and the carriage left the city uneventfully. Until we got into the bamboo grove. I heard the carriage rustling the bamboo leaves, and covered by the rustling was the swooshing of arrows. I got in front of Kongmin to block the arrows. That's the only way I knew to protect her. But one arrow still flew past me and hit her. It, it, he can't change it. I don't, I don't think it is changeable. Not in these ways, at least not like this. He has to find like the root, the root course. But even that's not guaranteed. Even for someone who experienced no small amount of impossible, I still found it beyond belief. It's simply uncanny, like the enemy knew there would be this tiny opening exactly at this exact moment. I failed again. <sighs> Space-time anchor located. Tesla Zero charging. Charging complete. Initiating transfer. And again and again. Oh no. How many more times must I try? Oof. I began to realize that some intangible force was holding me back all along. But I didn't know what it was. It's like I was fixing a leaking umbrella. One hole was patched up and another hole began to form. I was playing a game that had spun out of my control. If I could somehow get the whole picture from a high point, 
There might be a way to beat the game. But I was hopelessly trapped and had to play my part in the game. Yes, instead of the player, I'm merely a pawn on the chessboard. Gosh, oh no. <laughs> Who's playing this game? Are there any observers? Wh would they feel bored when the game has come to this far? They might be able to see in a glance the ending that I have to take, that I have to take thousands of steps to get to. I don't know how the story ends, or if the story has any ending at all. I nearly forgot initially my purpose was to return to Hyperion, but it doesn't matter anymore. Oh god. If there are observers watching this game, what would they say about all the things I've done? Aren't we kind of the observers? We the players? Because we observe everything and we lead the characters in doing what they are doing, kind of. I don't know if, the, if, if it's supposed to be this meta, but it, it can be seen this way. <sighs> His stupidity is off the chart. How could he fail such a simple task? If I were him, if he had done that, things would turn out differently. It's easy to say that from the outside. That is very true. Oh my god. Why can't he save everyone? Sure. They won't approve of me. Hmm. And they have every reason to do so. I finally realized that I am not the Mr. Assassin who could make everything happen in your eyes. You put your faith in the wrong person and I have failed you. Why would I save you? Oh my god. This is just like the back story. Oh my god. No. No, oh god. Tesla Zero rebooting. Warning. T rebooting? Warning? Initiating system. System wake up. Restoring speech module. That is the first time this happened. What the? God, I can't. I'm not okay. Uh, fate can be read, but not tempered with, despite one's strong longings. That's really interesting. God, I hate and I love this. I hate to love it. I, I love to hate it. <laughs> Both, actually. Both is true. Oh my god. Oh. What? I have experienced the future with you, but I have never witnessed your past. At that time, you chose to shoulder the destinies of others, just like what you are doing now. You have been forced to repeat the past over and over again. The song is nice. You are still in pain, but you have never forgotten your pain. And I have finally come to your past, to give your arduous journey through world fragments. A starting note. Cry if you feel the pain. This is so pretty. Just cry like a toddler. Let it all out. This is so beautiful and at the same time so sad. Don't fear your pain. It saved you from something even more horrible. Numbness. Oh, that was the song. It's because you no longer play a part yourself. You only observe now. Like me. Watching the horrors that you've undergone. But if you wish to understand humanity, you can't just be an onlooker. You have to stand right next to them and try to see what they are looking at. Oh, wow. Wow. That was what you told me in the distant future. Now that I try to stand beside you. What do your eyes fall upon? Wow. If there are other onlookers at this moment, they must be expecting something from you. They expect you to bypass even more tragedies until you reach a happy ending where everyone is safe and sound. They are totally talking about us. They do not know or care about what you've been through. Don't we care? But you have lost and found, time and time again, a little more than telltales to them. Tales whose endings they think they know. 
But is what they believe the truth? Wow. This story is not about deliverance. Its ending is constantly being modified, and new rifts emerge, and you are the one who keeps trying. Wow. And reliving the pain. Persistence alone won't help you accomplish the impossible, and miracles won't happen merely because you believe so. We both know that. Even if you strive for it, it's still beyond your current reach. Oh gosh, this is so... But here I am, offering you an opportunity to break away from the hopeless situation. Which is the meaning of my existence here. This is so amazing. I love this. I love this so, so much. Wow. We are going on. Oh my god. So this could be the ending, huh? Oh my god. Even though. <laughs> oh my god. Like everything what just happened. It, I can't. I can't say anything, because that said it all. It's so awesomely written, and it was such an amazingly beautiful yet sad scene, yet so true, and oh my god. <laughs> are you alright, Captain? Oh my god, where are we? We are at the start, right? Somewhere. It's Kung Ming's room. Where, where did I wake up the last time? After my many times of teleportation, it's taking longer and longer for me to regain consciousness. Oh gosh, that's dangerous. But I'm getting close now. At least I could make sure Rita and Theresa won't die for the last few times. Almost there. Only have to con keep Kongming alive now. This time I'll... Captain, you passed out all of a sudden, and I couldn't wake you up anyway, so I told the guards to carry you back. Why would you do that? Why didn't you listen to me? What? What? I told you if I passed out, you had to wake me up on the spot no matter what. Mm, he's changing a little. Oh. I tried, but you were like a rock. It took too long and I became worried. What time is it now? How much have I lost? The past and conditions all changed. Forget it. Do as I said. Take the ally behind the sugar figure stand. Stay five minutes in the textile shop before. Why? Don't ask why. Just do it if you wish to live. Captain, did you have a nightmare? Enough talk now. You should rest well. I'll have the handmaiden bring an ice pot to cool you down. To cool down the chamber. She took a towel to help me wipe up the sweat. Don't touch me. Stop looking at me like that. It came back, and it means I failed again. I couldn't take it. Oh god, it hurts so much. Seeing the captain so bitter. And so... Mm, this really hurts. I can't bear your eyes. Your expecting eyes. I... Mr. Assassin. I'm not your Mr. Assassin. The Mr. Assassin in your memory can do everything. But I... You know how many Chishi nights have I been through? How many times have I watched you disappear? I'm afraid. Afraid to meet your eyes when I wake up again. Afraid to run into another dead end. I want to run away from this. But where to? Running is a choice I don't have. What am I saying? Why am I even saying this? Did I say this to her before? Oh, You have a choice. You can always give me up and shake off the nightmare. Without me, Rita and Teresa would still take good care of you. You could erase me from your memory and live happily. Live happily? Without you? If you give me up now, I'd never hold any grudge against you. I never did. In the distant past, if it wasn't for you, I'd have died in the woods. But I know you can't possibly stay by my side every step of the way. I need to rely on myself and become stronger. Then you showed up again and warned me about Frodo. You risked your life to distract Frodo for me. 
You found the missing troops, and you set the table for the three kingdoms to cease fire and reach a deal. You found the connection between the explosive lanterns and the craftsmen, and the traitor among the shadow guards. Anyone could have done this. It's you who saved me from certain death time and time again. You still have no faith in yourself after everything you've done for me? I... Yes, every time you could only take one small step ahead and make one small change. But it's a gigantic mistake to admit defeat and deem yourself worthless because you haven't reached the final goal. You don't have to comfort me. This is no excuse for my failure. I refuse to see it as a failure. How many times now? How many time travels? I've lost count long ago. I answered this question without thinking and immediately realized something was wrong. Miss Iron Fist? You, you're awake? This is what changes everything. After a moment of silence, Miss Iron Fist spoke alongside the electric buzz. She yawned deeply, jumped out of the giant palm and adjusted her glasses. Good timing, you're still alive, fortune teller. I have to warn you, though, you'd never be able to reach the future you look forward to if you tear me apart. Fortune teller. Oh, Skipper, you're here too. She sounded arrogant and funny, but in her cold and mechanic voice, I sensed a trace of emotion. Never mind, it would take less time to search the records myself. I've been running on low power, but the background modules were still functioning and keeping records. Are you serious? You've rewritten the past this many times? You're the biggest tryout I know. Oh, don't get me wrong. I mean the future you who set the threshold number of consciousness mapping. Oh? Threshold number? Future me? Wait, what are you talking about? It's all calculated. He left me here to point out the direction for you when you're desperate. But the wake up is conditional. The future you set a threshold number of consciousness mapping to trigger my wake up. Oh! So, you are the final insurance the future me left? Correct. But if somehow you give up before reaching the threshold, I'd still be asleep now. But why? The future me should know better than to trust me. He set too high a target for me. Ha! <laughs> That's him being naive. He somehow still believes the past him, who has failed so many times, can still make it. He expects that you can find a completely different path than his, however small the chances. A different path? What? That sounds super lame to me. Only an idiot can come up with that. I'd say it's very characteristic of you. <laughs> oh wow, that's the first time I can laugh right now. <laughs> Miss Iron Fist? Maybe you could explain to us everything we've been through now. Everything? It all started with the three years when a fortune teller was away and Hudo broke the seal. You will really explain it. Oh my god. Please go ahead. The ruins were damaged and Golem, the wish granted too. But instead of being disabled completely, it went into hibernation. As a compensation mechanism, a self-driven management program was activated to act in its, to act in its stead. Self-driven management program? Is it? Yes, it's the true enemy that has tried and succeeded in elimina eliminating fortune teller on every timeline. But why does it hold such strong hostility against me? It's the golem that granted me immortality. Why would the program act against its will and try to undo the wish? Yeah, what? Remember what I said? Things began to fall apart in the three years you were away. At that time, you were not in this world. Before your return, the program had indexed and archived the profiles of everyone who'd been granted a wish. Thus, you became an anomaly in the system, an unidentified individual not meant for this world. And the men in black? Their mass manufactured agents to enforce the directive, erase you, the anomaly, from the system. It's beginning to make sense now. The assassin reminded me of someone serving the last Corsa Queen in Jormungand. The man who addressed himself as the messenger. He should have died in the fray for the Jormungand throne. Hmm, if my calculations are right, his death is simply an improvised play to distract attention. He is probably the incarnation of the pre-hibernation golem to roam freely in the world. Haha, 
In contrast, the Men in Black you met were simply mindlessly machines to execute the elimination order. If you told the truth and the program's goal is to wipe out Kongming, then why would the Corsair Queen, Arc Imperator, Rita and Theresa also die on the timelines I travel to? For the program, everything in this world is but data. And eliminating the anomaly, containing collateral damage to other data is not a priority for it. Of all the endings, isn't there one way I can live? No, not in my simulations. And the skipper's experience is also factual evidence. The thing is, the program's directive is binary. If it deems it impossible to erase the anomaly, it may resort to the ultimate solution, reset the whole world. Reset what? What? This is ridiculous. Ridiculous? Well, the golem in the ruins is ridiculous enough. <laughs> that is very true. Have you ever thought about it? Maybe itself is the greatest anomaly in this world. Huh? Never mind, you wouldn't understand anyway. That's enough explanation for you. Let's focus on the problem at hand. Is there really a solution? You said it before, the program will not rest until it achieves its goal. No, Captain, there is a solution. What? Fortune teller? You're smarter than I calculated. I didn't expect you to be able to think outside the box. What, 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 what? Enlighten me. <laughs> The only way to keep myself alive is to leave this world, right? True! I... True! I haven't thought about that. Leave? You... You are saying I should bring her on board Hyperion? That's the only way. Fortune teller leaving this world would count as mission accomplished for the program. But can you really do that? What exactly are you? There seems to be some misunderstanding. After all, I'm but a man-made item. I'm not the cause of your consciousness mappings. It's all you. Me? Until now, you have not yet grasped the true nature of the Hyperion sailing on the Sea of Quanta. Built by your memory, it's the manifestation of your power and the path leading to tomorrow. I'm not the game changer you wish me to be. I'm merely left here to help you change the game yourself. What's mission impossible for you now might be possible for the future you. The one who built this timeline loop and sent the past self into the future is you. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. This is a lot. That still makes me a pawn on the chessboard. But the one playing the chess game is also me. The future me. Yes, the game is meant for the future you to beat the ill fate in this world. But you were not made into a pawn by anyone. Instead you chose to be part of the game willingly. But if you wish to understand humanity, you can't just be an onlooker. You have to get close and study carefully. You said this to me in the distant future. And that future is built by both you and the future you. You keep saying there's nothing you can do, but you've only been doing one thing. To return to the past and walk back into the darkness, that's the only way to reach the light. You chose to throw yourself back into the darkness time and time again. Once wasn't enough, so you tried ten times more, hundreds of times more. It's your tireless attempts that awakened me. Wow, but hundreds? You chose to become the future you. You chose this future. I see. Good, but before you fully understand the nature of your power, you won't be able to travel across the bubble universes. Huh? That's why I'm here. To stabilize and amplify your power. Fortune teller, what's on your mind? It doesn't seem like I have a choice, does it? I've never wished to rule in Beria to begin with. Duty and honor pushed me to the throne, but if I had a choice, I'd rather become an explorer roaming the realm. Thousands of years can turn anyone insane. If not for Rita, I'd probably be known as the Mad Empress now. Kongming. According to Miss Ironfist, this program would stop at nothing to eliminate my existence. I've watched this world for a thousand years, but still there are views here I'd like to see again someday. Leaving this world is the best thing I can do to protect it. So you've made up your mind? But Rita... I know what's on your mind, but even with my amplification, Skipper cannot take two people away from this world. She really has to leave Rita. 
But what about Rita then? How will she feel? God, I'm crying by the thought of how Rita will feel if she goes. Because they spent a thousand years together. I'm really not okay. The enforcers of the program may find you any minute. Time is running out. If you can leave before the program intervenes, Emberia will still be able to enjoy a wonderful night. <sighs> Looks like I'll miss the fireworks show tonight after all. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, now I'm really crying. Don't leave her behind. <laughs> Don't leave her behind. Kongming and I gently pushed the door open and found Rita taking a nap by the desk with scrolls and a pen beside her. At least write her, please. At least write her something, please. Kongming stood by the door for a long while and eventually took a woolen blanket to cover Rita up. She stood beside Rita and quietly watched her. We're not waking her up? Shh. Min reached out her hand, but eventually took it back. No, please wake her up. <laughs> Gosh. This will suffice. <laughs> she watched Rita intently, and nothing could make her eyes move. Just like the last time. I'm still not used to saying goodbye. We live in a world where we always leave without saying goodbyes properly. It's time to go. I had to play the bad guy interrupt her. I took her hand and dragged her out of the room. In the distance, Tesla Zero was flickering with strange lights. I looked at Kongming and saw her lips quivering, but nothing came out. I nodded to her. See you in the not so distant future. Grand Chancellor. Huh? Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. The festive celebration is about to start. The hour has already come. I'll be right there. I'm sorry. I can't even voice anyone right now. Oh. Wait, where's Her Majesty? I was going to report it. We couldn't find Her Majesty anywhere in the city. Rita lifted her head and seemed to realize something. Ah. What's wrong, Grand Chancellor? Never mind. Her Majesty is probably out of the city looking for new adventures. She knows. Oh my god. <laughs> Too much. Should we send guards to look for Her Majesty? Goodbyes really always get me. That's why this is so terrible for me right now. Should we send guards to look for her majesty? There is no need. You're dismissed. After the guard left, Rita began to stroke the blanket and fixated her eyes on the blue fan by the window. She left the fan. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh, this is this is terrible. Your majesty. Looks like you're on a long journey now. Oh. <laughs> we see the fireworks. I mean, at least someone has to see them, right? Oh. This is still so pretty. Wow, okay. So, are we in the future now? Oh my god, I'm not okay. Captain on bridge. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> You're finally back! How's the past me doing? Hmm, what should I say? You were a handful, even as a small child. I'll take that as a compliment. After I leave T here, events that involve you should end now. The seed was planted and the story is to be continued. The journey started with you, but won't end with you. 
Even now there are travelers like the Hyperion crew who have lost their footing in a bubble universe. To provide shelter for these children. I don't think that sums up the meaning of the journey. What exactly are you seeking? Hmm, <laughs> still so secretive. Sorry, it's a speculation of mine and only time can tell if it's right or wrong. If you say so. Right, I've been archiving the observation data of bubble universes and I found a few curious points. I plan to compile a collection of reports based on the data and I'm going to name it Valkyrie Persona. Oh wow. Um, that sounds great. Hmm, it's quite to my taste. Also, you seem to have a habit of recording the events after every mission, right? Well, what? How do you know? Do I have to remind you what an accomplished astrolog astrologist is capable of? The AI database should have covered every de detail of past events, but I feel your account is more entertaining. For reference, these files should also have a name of their own. I'm thinking. Hold on, my friend. As the author, I feel I'm entitled to name the series myself. Hmm, <laughs> I'm certain mine is better, but I'll hear you out nevertheless. Hmm. I pretended to think hard and uncannily. The first thing that popped up was a story that I used to love reading. Hmm, it's decided. I'm gonna call it... Cap's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> really? <laughs> that is it, huh? Oh my god. Okay, I have not calmed down yet. Wow. I... I'm not even sure that I quite understood the end, but honestly, <laughs> all that mattered to me right now was Rita being left behind, and she knew. Without a word, she knew it. Oh my god, and she understands, and I love Rita. I love Rita a lot. Honestly, I don't know if you guys can explain the ending a little to me, or if that is kind of, maybe, spoilering in some ways? But if you can explain the end to me, please do so. Because I'm not quite sure that I got everything and I would love to, like, really, really understand it. Well, that was a journey. <laughs> that was a long journey and it was really amazing. Guys, I'm really glad I checked this out. And yeah, I hope you guys had a lot of fun as well. I'm still a bit um <laughs> in my feels. <laughs> Let's just say that. But... I'm still looking forward to more Honkai story, like, even if it's not canon. I don't care. This was amazing. This was really, really cool. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And if you did, and are still watching, <laughs> then I hope you leave a like and subscribe, because it would really make my day. And I would really love to see you guys next time when we check out more Honkai. Bye!